It's the How Games Make Money podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Grubb from GamesBeat.com. This is the show where I talk to people working in and around games and ask them, how does this business work? Is it all just four easy payments of $99.99? New episodes try to come out each Monday. I fail at that constantly. On this episode, I talk to QuadPay CEO Brad Lindenberg. He joins me to talk about hooking up with GameStop to help people pay off their purchases over time. As the name suggests, QuadPay enables customers to buy something online or in a store and then break up paying for those goods into four installments over a six-week period. QuadPay is one of the new options that GameStop added recently to make it easier for people to pay for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X or, or anything else. And I had a lot of questions about how something like this works, and Brad was kind enough to walk us through it. Uh, I guess I'll say that the quick takeaway is that it seems like a fair service that it isn't really equivalent to financing. So it was good to kind of clear that stuff up. Also, those consoles are now, you can pre-order them if you could find them. I didn't use quad pay because I, uh, I I was rushing so fast. I'm like, I'm just going to put it on the credit card and think later. Uh, I was only able to get an Xbox Series X so far. PlayStation 5 still eludes me. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, but yeah, you know what? Let's get to the episode first, though. Thank you for listening. You can get more from me at gamesbeat.com. Email the podcast at jeff.grub at gmail.com with the subject line, how games make money, or reach out on Twitter. I'm at Jeff Grubb. The podcast is at HGMM show. Also, you can support this show by going to patreon.com slash HGMM. Anything you provide will go into keeping how games make money going. And you can join our Discord. Uh, we got a really cool community. Uh, I like to hang out and talk to people in there, uh, see what they're up to, see what they're thinking, uh, drop hints about what I'm working on. It's a pretty cool place to hang out. Join us there. I would love to have you. All right, let's get to the show. Joining me now is Brad Lindenberg. Go ahead and say hi to everybody, Brad. Hi, everyone. Brad Lindenberg, co-CEO, co-founder of QuadPay. Thank you for joining me, Brad. I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, you know, I'm having you on. Uh, you know, we kind of uh, got connected th- th- through email, and uh, we're getting connected because you guys are now working with GameStop. I guess we should just let's just start there. How did this, uh, I guess, partnership come into play? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are a couple of avenues that you know sort of uh, landed us uh, with this relationship with GameStop. I think the first is that. Uh, we can get into this, but we have a um, an an app that uh, that users can download from the App Store, where you can use QuadPay anywhere. We saw a huge take up um, across the GameStop um, online and in store properties through our app, just organically. And you know, typically when when we see um, growth in a particular category or or merchant, our team will generally reach out with some data points and have a conversation. Which is what we did, um, and we, you know we were able to, um, you know, provide them with a you know a good demo and sort of understanding of why they should use QuadPay. Um, it made a lot of sense for their demographic. And then secondly, um, uh, QuadPay um, is a part of a, a listed company called Zip, um, listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Um, Zip is the one of the largest buy now pay later platforms. Um, in Australia, and they work with EB Games, and EB Games is a subsidiary of GameStop, and has seen a lot of success with buy now, pay later, um, and so that's that's really how we got there. This is notable in the United States because it's not something that we've had a lot of. But I, but my understanding, looking into it, is this is a pretty normal thing elsewhere, right? Yeah. So the the whole category really started off in Australia maybe five or six years ago, um, and. Uh, the, the sort of four installment model um, originated there and has sort of grown to become the preeminent formula for paying in installments online. Um, there were obviously uh, businesses in the US like a firm who were offering installment loans, which are loan products, mm-hmm. which, which are slightly different and incur an APR. Um, and so, you know, the real product market fit, um, you know, online and in store that is starting to you know, show across the marketplace is is this model that we're doing where you don't charge interest to the consumer um, and you allow consumers to pay over time. What's the reasoning behind, like, the way that the payment plans are set up? Like, is there a research that shows that this is kind of a fair balance or is it just uh, is it something else? Yeah, so, look, you know, as the name suggests, QuadPay splits up the payment into four installments. Um, it was set up this way because it's very simple. I think the simplicity of what we offer is really what drives the uptake, the conversion, and 
and the benefit for the consumer. You know, anyone can divide the price by four and you know what you're getting. So let's say, for example, you know, you see a, um, something online for $100. With Quad Pay, you pay four installments of $25. Um, over a period of six weeks, so it's four. We- it's it's uh, four installments. One installment paid every two weeks from the date that you make your 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 purchase. Um, com- compare that to an experience where you might see something online and it says it's a hundred dollars or thirteen dollars per month. You know, mm-hmm. you know how many months, how much interest am I getting charged? What's that thirteen dollars made up of? Um, you know, it's very opaque um, and isn't as as simple as. The pay and four model, and the you know the beauty of the pay and four model really is that um, it sort of rolls over multiple pay cycles. So you know you might pay up front today, and then in two weeks' time, there's another payment, another payment, another payment, and you get paid in between. Yeah, I was I was thinking about that. Like if I um if I wanted to do something like this, I could show up to buy the console on payday, and then uh, two weeks later, another payment would be due, and that's that's when I would have my next payday. Is that kind of that was the idea, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So, um, you know, uh, and allows you to budget. You know, you you sort of know what your incoming cash flow hits are every every two weeks when you get paid, and you know when your rent's going out, and you know what else you're doing with your with your finances. You know, quad pay is perceived more as like a budgeting tool than it is as like a finance tool. You know, a finance tool, you're really going out to say, okay, I'm making this purchase. It's a lot of money and I, I, and I need to figure out whether, you know, how 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 I can get this and, and um, afford it over like a long period of time. Uh, quad pay is really great for, you know, even small ticket uh, purchases. You know, our, our minimum is about $30, $35. It will go up to fifteen hundred dollars, but you know, if you're going to go buy like a Peloton bicycle or something very expensive, it's better to use like a financing tool. Right. So I'm, I'm like I'm trying to think about some of the uh, the skepticism I, I saw online when I when I had a story about this. I think um, one of the things was uh, something like this is always financing, and and the interest is just built in to the to the thing, and that that doesn't seem to be the case here, right? Yeah. So with our relationship with GameStop, I mean, I, I don't really want to get into the the deal construct, but you know, sufficient to say that the merchant is paying the fee, and for the consumer, all they really do is sort of split up the payment in four, and what and what you see is what you get. You know, so if you you go and uh, you want to buy something for two for two hundred dollars on GameStop.com, you, you're going to be paying four installments of fifty dollars um, over six weeks, and so the sticker price that you're being uh, that you're seeing on the product is still the same price that you end up paying, except you have the optionality of spreading it over. And what that really does is it benefits the merchant and the consumer. It's a real win-win-win uh, simply because the, the, the consumer can now afford to spend a bit more. So typically we see a lift in average order value, you know, circa 40, 40% range um, in this particular instance. And then, you know, you also see um, the consumer uh, buying something today uh, versus putting it off where they may have uh, delayed that purchase because they were still saving up for it. Um, and then, you know, lastly, uh, you, you see a lift in conversion rate. Um, a lot of our customers pay with like debit cards. And if you have a debit card, there's really no way to spread out payments um, other than, you know, use the funds that are in your bank account. So it sort of provides a same simulation as like a credit card on a per transaction basis online um, for users that are using debit cards. Um, but, uh, you know, then allows them to pay over time. Is this going to hit your credit or is this not a credit check thing at all? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, QuadPay doesn't um, affect your credit. Um, so what we do is we do do a soft credit check at the time of uh, purchase, but it really is just a soft pull. It's one of the sort of data points that we use to decide whether we approve you to use QuadPay. Our like approval rates are very high, you know, 80 odd percent range. Um, but um, we will not report back to the bureaus if, you, uh, if, if you're late. Um, however, you'll obviously just get blocked off the system until you are in good standing again. Um, we send you SMS and email reminders when you have upcoming uh, like payments due. If, if, you're, if you're late on a payment, you'll just have to pay us back and then you can use QuadPay again. So it's, it's very, very, you know, we don't, we don't believe in, we don't, we don't think that a purchase of a PlayStation or a purchase of a video game should affect something like a, like a student loan. You know, they're very different. 
the very the, the very different purchases and particularly millennials uh, are quite sensitive to anything that can affect their credit. So, you know, that's also one of the reasons why this construct is becoming so popular. Yeah, and I mean, and you touched on something there that I that I assumed, but I don't know if it's been spelled out yet. That this this thing can work, uh, especially with the consoles. Um, uh, is is it because they are always connected, or you know, if you're uh, using a, a service like this, you're always connected? You said the the system could get shut down. Were you referring to the console wouldn't work until you just finished your payments? Oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. When I say uh, quad pay, you wouldn't be able to make any additional purchases using quad pay until you're in good standing. So let's say you make a purchase for two hundred dollars and you know, you, you're late on your second installment, you'll have to pay off that second installment in order to make additional purchases using quad pay on any of the merchants that accept it. Of course, your console will still work. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, I, I wanted to d- double check there. It's a, a thing that I thought was maybe possible, but I wouldn't necessarily think that, uh, I, th- I thought it might work with like the Xbox version of like their, uh, their all access. Like maybe if you don't pay there, they just shut it down until you pay. Uh, we, we still have clarification there, but I figured quad pay probably wouldn't have that power. Uh, it's, and you don't. So, okay. So that clear, clears that up. I guess let's walk through the through the process. Uh, GameStop, you guys are working with them. If I go into a GameStop and, and try to buy a console and I, I want to use Quad Pay, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to go up to the counter, counter, say, hey, give me one of them PlayStation 5s, give me an Xbox, and uh, I want to use Quad Pay, or, or what's it like? Yeah, so I can talk you through that. There are two ways that you can use Quad Pay. Um, one is online on GameStop.com, and the other one is at the physical point of sale in a physical retail store. So maybe we can start with with the in-store um, example. Um, so with the in-store um, experience, what you're required to do is download the QuadPay app um, from the App Store. And the stores where we are, we are like rolling out now in I think 36 or 3,700 stores across the US, where when you walk into the store, you'll, you'll see signage that will be uh, promoting buy now, pay later with, with QuadPay. And on the signage will be a like QR code. So you can either scan the QR code or you can go in, into the App Store on Google or on Apple and you can search for QuadPay. You can download the app. The QuadPay app, um, you have to register for the app. You put in some basic information, first name, last name, address, date of birth. Um, and then we assign you a balance inside the app. Um, and effectively what you can do is you can add the QuadPay. If you go into the account section with, within the app, you can add QuadPay to your Apple wallet or your Google wallet. And so the card, the QuadPay Visa card gets gets added just like a regular credit card into your like Apple wallet. And then what you do is you go and you pick a product, you go up to the register, um, they ring it up on the till. And then when it's time to pay, same way as you would pay with a regular Visa card um, or MasterCard or like American Express, you just present your your phone and uh, tap and pay using, using Apple Pay or using Google Pay. Um, and then the payment will be split up up in, into four payments. Now, during the registration flow in the in the sign up process, QuadPay asks you to link um, a payment source. So that payment source might be your standard like debit card, which is linked to your bank account, or like a like another credit card. Um, and when you pay with QuadPay, we pay as in QuadPay pays GameStop um, immediately for the purchase when you tap. But on the linked debit card or credit card, that payment gets split up into four installments. And, and does that first installment does it happen that day? Or do you have the option to use to start that day, or, or is it any time in the first two weeks? Uh, that payment starts uh, right away. Um, right. So the payment number one is is on day one, and it's just it's a quarter of the total payment. Correct. And then we automatically charge the remaining three installments every two weeks. Okay. And then and then online, how, is it similar? Online is very similar. Um, you would go into a website, onto a GameStop. Uh, you can add a product to the cart, go through to the checkout, um, fill in all of your details as, as if you're doing a regular purchase. And in the payment section of the checkout where you would regularly see credit card or, for example, PayPal, there'll be another option that says Quad Pay. And if you choose Quad Pay uh, to, as, as, as your payment method, uh, you can then check out using Quad Pay. Very similar to checking out online uh, using a regular credit card. It pops up in like a sort of like modal pop-up window. It asks for your, your you know, for your first name, last name, and your address. And then you enter your like credit card number. Um, this can be a debit card, a credit card, any any card. Uh, we will charge the first installment on that card. 
um, and then uh, complete the purchase. And then in two weeks' time, four weeks' time, and six weeks' time, the remaining installments get charged. Uh, let me let me ask you: Do you think that um, when when you know when this GameStop deal went through, do you think it would have happened if if there wasn't necessarily a, a, a pandemic or a, a a recession due to the pandemic? Or is this something that you think they accelerated because they're like, okay, well, we want people to be able to buy a console, and, and fewer people are going to have money right now, uh, so let's figure something out? Or, or is this something that just like it was naturally going to happen anyway? Um, look, I think um, I think COVID has had an accelerating effect on all e-commerce, and it's mm-hmm. what it's done is it's forced uh, merchants who are heavily, uh, you know, reliant on physical retail to really think about their online strategy becoming, you know, more and more core. As stores get shut down or stores are closed, um, PP, you know, people have to funnel through the on, the online experience, and so when you sort of um, rank. Um, you know, technology projects that can drive a meaningful uplift um, in in like revenue. You know, quad pay um, it would would be up there. You know, pr- probably the one of the highest um, you know sort of return on investment offerings relative to the effort that's involved in deploying a technology like ours. And so, you know, we were in discussions with them for a while. Um, we had data even pre-COVID showing great take up of um, of quad pay through the app. Um, you know, and I think just given, you know, I think what really accelerated was just given given the release of the PlayStation and the Xbox, um, and you know, having this type of facility online um, for the for the drop made a lot of sense. So I think it was a, it was definitely a combination of things, but I really don't think um, it was the reason that they launched it. What was your exposure to the video game business before this? Yeah, so, you know, QuadPay is a pretty agnostic tool. Um, and it can be used uh, for many different, you know, types types of purchases. Uh, I think, you know, our, um, you know, we, we obviously have have consumers using using QuadPay, you know, in many different areas. We, we see transactions coming through on the PlayStation Network, but we also get purchases on Amazon and Walmart and Target and all over the place. So, you know, it's 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 really um, the way I view it is 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 as a solution. You know, for you know younger consumers um, who are looking to responsibly um, uh, budget and buy things over time, and it just so happens that video games, you know, are a are a you know are are, are like a great like product fit for that type of demographic. But so is fashion and beauty. Um, and many other sort of like categories. So, you know, we're really just like a payment type and it can really be used anywhere. You know, doing this show, I talk about the way games make money. One of the things that I often come back to is that uh, when a company does any sort of focus on gaming, it, it really hones what they can be good at because gamer, gamers, that gaming audience is so intense and they are so, um, they, they're so detail oriented about how every little thing works. And if something uh, isn't for them the the, the companies are going to have to change it because it's just not going to work in that in that field uh we see this with um like communications tools like over the last couple of years with uh uh audio video equipment that people use to capture stuff or even just like cameras and microphones when they make a make a new microphone for that gaming category uh that it has to be tipped up because gamers demand the best and they're very loud about it um is that something that you think about where it's like you know this if we can sort of win over this gaming audience uh we can maybe get a loyal customer for a very long time yeah i mean we've we've built our business on like um you know like strong innovation great user experience and the tight tight feed, feedback loop you know and so i think gamers are technically um, very astute, you know, they know what they want and they're looking for services and solutions that, you know, fit those needs. And so, you know, we'd, we'd invite feedback um, on our product, on, on our experience, you know, we, we we sort of like relish in that because it really allows us to understand where there might be any weak points and how we can improve. So, you know, I think um, one, of, one of the things that we've done, which is great, is, is really the partnership with Apple Pay and with Google Pay. And that, and that allows for a very frictionless in-store experience and online. And so, you know, unlike other other types of, you know, services where you might have to enter your social security number and you have to fill out long application forms and the approvals aren't real time, get charged a lot of interest, you know, we sort of design the product in a way that's extremely uh, um, easy to use and frictionless, um, you know, and we just hope that, 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 that they appreciate that because it's a, you know, it is. You know, it looks looks like magic when you can just tap and pay and split up into four. But there's a 
that 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 there's there's a lot going on on the back end. Yeah, and, and it's, it seems like you guys are confident that you guys have that back end stuff figured out. That's and like that's why you are sort of growing right now because you you got the the fun foundation is all there, and now it's time to get people like GameStop on board. Yeah, look, you know we're a top fifty app in the App Store. Our business is you know growing significantly. Uh, we're doing billions of dollars in transaction volume. Um, you know we have you know, millions of consumers who have used QuadPay and continue to use QuadPay. So, you know, the business is really op- operating at a great scale. Um, we, you know, we think going into Q4, that'll compound significantly. Um, there are other, you know, other merchants coming onto the system as well that are, you know, similar size and scale. And, um, you know, we think we, we think we're really at just the beginning of a, of a shift in the way that consumers pay. Brad, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. I, re- I really appreciate it. Uh, is there you know, any closing thoughts, anything you want to add before I let you go? No, look, I think it's an exciting time. Uh, this, this, this next quarter with the new Xbox coming out and the new PlayStation is going to be exciting. I'm a gamer myself. I love video games and just looking forward to you know, trying out the new consoles and playing some of my favorite games. Yeah, likewise. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, everybody out there for listening. I'll be back with another new episode next week. Until then, have a good one. Take care of yourself and goodbye.